We're back. It's the Lions fan cast. Uh, we've been away for about a month now, Mike, and a lot has happened in that month, including a grand final that you got to go down to on the weekend. Yeah, very lucky I was, Don. Got to go down there for work and uh, sat in the outer with the rest of the punters and had a great old time and then luckily enough got to go into the Hawthorne dressing rooms afterwards and then uh, we yeah, our website afl.com.au got a bit of exclusive access to head around with the Hawks uh, underneath the ground before they headed back up onto the field at 7.30 and uh, get presented with the cup in front of their fans again. Uh, amazing experience and I'm um, so fortunate to have uh, got to partake in that. And But um, back to Brisbane now and back delving into the line <laughs> stuff. As you mentioned, there's been plenty, hasn't there? But the last couple of weeks it was stagnant in a few areas and we're starting to get the ball rolling now with the trade and exchange period just around the corner. Yeah, you're probably eyed off about mid-year thinking, as soon as the, the Lions round 23 oh. finishes, I'll have a bit of a break. <laughs> Hasn't it, turned out that way. That's exactly right. I looked off round <laughs> 23 and I thought the next week will be pretty busy with a few things and then we'll we'll just roll along for a couple of weeks, but it's been anything but. Mm. News breaking all the time, at night, early in the morning, whenever. It's just been very uh, hectic time in many regards, but but also there's um, quite a few things still unresolved at the club. Obviously, the, the Lions have got a coach since we last spoke in yep. Justin Lepich. Uh, quite a few players, which we'll talk about uh, shortly, that are still um, unsure about their future. And there's a there's a board issue that's still unfolding at the moment. So mm. there's still a bit to be resolved yet, but um, plenty happening, isn't there? <laughs> there is. Uh, Rob Kerr, the National Talent Manager, will be joining us in just a minute uh, to, to chat about all the Lions list issues. Uh, very interesting chat, I think it's going to be, because there's plenty we need to run by him. But as you said, we do have a coach now in Justin Lepich. He was one who probably at first um, wasn't really in many people's minds, but he seemed a really, really impressive uh, person in, in the few times he's spoken since the announcement. He's always spoken very well, Lepper, and he does have a good background now. He's had six or seven years. He's worked under Lee Matthews. He worked in Michael Voss's first season, and obviously most recently with... Damien Hardwick. I mean, we weren't privy to sitting in on the meeting, the coaches um, interviews, but from, I guess from the, the choices we had, I like the selection they've made. I really like the fact they didn't go down a succession plan and that's no disrespect to Neil Craig or anyone else that may have been at the forefront of that senior sort of uh, option, but I'm glad they just handed it over to someone fresh, someone new and, and let them take it in the direction they want because, um, I mean, he served a long enough apprenticeship, as all those other candidates had that had been interviewed. So I'm happy for Justin Lepich, and I think there's always, a, despite what happened to Michael Voss, there's always a little bit of optimism when someone new comes into the club, mm. and we'll really find out. I think those first... We, he's got a three-year contract, but those first six weeks will get people back on board, <laughs> won't it? If, if the Lions are five and one after six weeks, everyone will be hailing it as the greatest decision ever. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's always exciting when you get a new face in. So um, I think everyone just hopes Leopard does, does well. And he, he made a pretty big announcement um, just the other day, actually. He announced that one of his first decisions is he's taking more people to Arizona. Basically, almost the whole team, I think, is going mm. over now, um, which I can only imagine caused a few logistical nightmares this, <laughs> this close to the trip. Um, and, and a few financial concerns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not wrong about that. But, but I think it's an important uh, thing to, to happen, considering the fact that we have had players now who are wanting to leave, who have expressed... Um, their, their opinion that maybe they haven't fitted in as well as they'd have liked, that I think sending more people over to Arizona rather than just the, the five-year-plus players is really good for, obviously, the physical benefits, but also for, for group bonding. Absolutely. I think bonding's the main thing there because they go to Arizona very shortly after that preseason starts. So for Justin Lepich to walk in and get his team around him and then to split and diversify so quickly into his reign would just be um it would just wouldn't be beneficial at all so he's going to have he's likely to have some new assistant coaches with him there's likely to be some new staff which we we don't know about that at this stage yet either but there's gonna be a lot of new faces that are going to want to get to know each other and they want to know the players and to have them in two different parts of the world just for a couple of weeks isn't ideal so it's a great decision and i think it was almost um oh it just had to happen yeah you're not wrong about that and on the board matter just briefly i think that look, at the time of recording there is no date for the egm nor is there any resolution from afl mediation talks i don't know if they're still ongoing we haven't heard much they're about them. it's very very well under wraps i will say that mm. um obviously there's a lot of issues going on at the moment it's hard to keep totally abreast of them all but um as, f as far as I can tell, I'm not sure if they have re-met with the AFL Commission since early last week, but I think the Lions board might be taking the the advice of the AFL Commission and trying to sort things out behind closed doors instead of sort of airing it in public as it had been the, the previous couple of weeks. So I think something will happen sort of later this week because we know that that EGM um, 
proposition or that date that was supposed to be set is is fast approaching. It's Friday. By Friday, it is, yeah. exactly. So we should have some news one way or the other by then, you would expect, or some sort of announcement from the club. So I guess people don't have too long to wait out, and um, that'll be another another issue ticked off. Yeah, and with a lot going on around the club, particularly to do with trading and free agency, we're going to chat to Rob Kerr on the Fancast right after this. The best way to keep track of everything Lions is to head to lions.com.au. It's the first place to find the latest Lions news and videos, get the lowdown on upcoming games, results and player stats. There's also great ways to interact with live chats, downloads and player of the year voting updates. And with a social media hub, you can connect with all the Lions social media activity. Lions.com.au. Everything Lions, all in one place. Uh, joining us on the fan cast today uh, is the national talent manager, Rob Kerr. Now, Rob, there has been so much talk about the uh, five homesick players. Can you give us any news on, on where that stands? Lep has obviously gone and spoken to them. Is there any developments with any of those five players? Oh, look, that's probably been a major development in that Justin has uh, made uh, personal contact with each of them. He's had uh, face-to-face meetings. Um, you know, he's, he's impressed upon them. He, his desire for them to continue as Brisbane players and certainly spoke to them about the, the uh, culture he's wanting to build and the uh, uh, renewed emphasis on player development and the increase in the um, coaching staff from the development uh, side of things. Um, so, and we're um, following up some of those discussions. Uh, it's going to be... I suppose, you know, we, we're in the process of trying to turn players' minds and, and give them something to think about. And uh, I'd have to say that, you know, Justin's been terrific in those discussions and and is uh, certainly putting his best foot forward and, and trying to um, sell to the players his vision of uh, what being a Lions player under, under Justin Lepich looks like. Given all that, Rob, do you think it's something that's going to take uh, quite a bit of time? Like, I guess he's, if they had their, their minds... Um, set on moving back into state. Is it going to take a week or a couple of weeks? Do you think it'll be sort of later in the trade period when these these things are resolved? Uh, yeah, look, I'd I'd expect that's probably the most likely scenario. Um, uh, we'll we'll continue chipping away. Obviously, other you know, clubs have registered interest in, in some of these players. Um, you know, we're certainly taking the view that they're, they're required players, and and um, for it to go any other way. You know, there'd need to be something, you know, very attractive put in front of us. But um, this whole trade period, well, we've got another three and a bit weeks to go. There'll be plenty of twists and turns and, and, and uh, you've just got to sort of ride it out and hope, hope that you, you can put your best foot forward and get, that, get the desirable outcome. As things currently stand, um, can you let us know which, one of, which ones you, you still hold out a bit of hope of being able to retain? Oh, look, we haven't given up hope on any of them. Um, and, you know, if you, you know, we've certainly got to paint a picture for all of them that um, we, we want them to, to stay. Uh, you know, if you send a signal that suggests otherwise, then, then you're probably, um, you know, not doing much to uh, support the case that you're making. Uh, Rob, most of those guys have been linked to various clubs. Can you give us an indication of, we'll start with one name, Sam Doherty. Can you give us an indication of how many clubs have spoken to you guys or has there been any... Oh, look, guys, I'm, I'm not, not going to give you a rundown on, on each player and each club and that sort of thing. Um, uh, you know, when we get to the end of the trade period, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, you know, be open about what's occurred in the life. But um, at the moment, you know, I don't think it's necessarily to the club's benefit to, um, you know, be, be throwing up a whole lot of uh, possibilities and scenarios and the like. So there's there's five players obviously taken in the past three years in the draft, pretty high picks as well, who, who have all expressed uh, homesickness to some extent. Can you let us know, in your opinion, what's gone wrong along the track with these players? Were they maybe... Um, uh, not given the support that they needed up here, or do do you have an opinion on that? Oh, look, you know the, the, the comment I'd make about that. I, I think the club as a whole has to own it. Every, every part of a football club, um, you know, clearly, um, yes, these boys have been uh, talented young players. Uh, we brought them up, and for whatever reason, uh, they haven't quite um, laid down the roots that would 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 have liked in uh, them to have laid down in Brisbane. So. 
um, you know, across the whole, every, every area of the football club, I think we have to, um, you know, assess what, what, what needs to be done better. Um, you know, I'm yet to see a problem where there's not uh, contributions from a whole lot of different areas. And, you know, in some cases, um, you know, perhaps uh, a player himself might have been more willing to come forward and express some of the issues that he had and that might have allowed us to address some of them. So, you know, I think it's... Obviously, we go through and have a look at each of the boards and what, what some of the issues are. And, and you can't sort of put your finger on, OK, here's the one common theme with these players. Um, the only real common theme is, you know, they do all talk about homesickness. Well, but it's not necessarily... Um, you know, you've got to drill down a bit further than that. So, from, uh, yeah. Sorry, Rob, from, from your perspective, Robin, and your position, with all this yeah. happening in the past couple of years, does it make you more hesitant or a bit more nervous looking at... Uh, I mean, I guess the lines have got to go into state generally. That's just the way the, the competition's set up. But how... does it, Do you have any more trepidation, I guess, looking at this draft or the following one when you're thinking about these interstate guys? How does it affect your role and your uh, thoughts on, on getting those players? Oh look, you know, you probably, you probably, um, you know, do. We've always taken a pretty good, uh, try to get a good read on how how resilient the boy is, and um, and you know, his, his likelihood to adapt. But the reality is, when you when you move a um, eighteen year old player away from every support work network he's known, um, you're not going to uh, be able to predict with a hundred percent. Accuracy, how how they're going to um, how they're going to transition, and you know you you do have to back your club in to be able to manage uh, that and and um, and get the boys ingrained in the in the culture and the like. As I said, you know we'll, we'll look at all different facets to it. So you probably you know you maybe you, you, you cast you, you'll recheck things a little more, but the reality is. Brisbane Lions can't limit themselves to uh, players out of Tasmania for argument's sake, mm. where there's not another AFL club, or um, or uh, Queensland. Otherwise, you're just not going to be competitive. So, um, yes, you have to have a think about. Okay, is there any red flags that I really uh, need to um, be careful about, and perhaps go and do a bit more digging here? Um, you, you naturally do that, but um, you know we, we also do have to back ourselves into. Uh, provide the right environment for boys to uh, commit to. Um, you'd have to say this year, the, the four, you know, all indications are that the um, boys that came in last year have adapted terrifically well. You know, one change in the in the setup this year was that they all lived in in the same house, uh, which was something that the club hadn't done before, and that seems to have worked. But you'd be Silly to think that that would work for every player that we subsequently drafted. As a matter of fact, just come out of an interview with a um, you know, pretty high, like, highly rated young player who's around our mark this year who was adamant that he'd want to live in a um, in a host family environment. So, mm. uh, you, you, as much as you can draw out of you know revisiting the way things have been managed and done at all levels and in all facets of the activities in the past, you can't lose sight of the fact that each each one's an individual, and um, and you really have to be switched on to the fact that they are individual, and um, and to make sure that there's plenty of communication, uh, that if there are any issues arising, we get on top of those early and, and, and address them. The second half of that interview with Rob Kerr will be online on the Lions site a little later on. Uh, until then, though, that's the fancast. Bye. Bye.